Dear Mr. President and Madam Vice President, at least 2.7 million arts and culture workers remain unemployed following the coronavirus pandemic. I am not one of them. It would be ignorant to say I wish I was, but I used to long for sustainable employment in what I still consider my field. Regardless, it is my request that some enlightened compassion be shown to the professional artists who undoubtedly enrich our society. We would not be coming out of this pandemic with any sanity left were it not for the hope, escape, pleasure, enlightenment, and connection their creations have endowed. Because I had my daughters too soon after college and was too soon forced to raise them on my own with no support, I didn't have the luxury of taking risks. Instead of moving to a large city with abundant arts opportunities where I could selfishly pursue the playwriting and directing I had studied in college, I decided to raise my daughters in Joe Biden's own Scranton, where my Eastern European ancestors had moved to mine coal. My father, a graduate of the University of Scranton, voluntarily joined the, or the Air Force and served as a pilot during Vietnam after he learned the army was about to draft him. The war destroyed my parents' marriage. And after they divorced, we left my birth state of California. My mother moved restlessly. It was important that my kids had a hometown and could grow up knowing where they came from. The point of this letter is not to share my life story, but I believe my story is echoed by hundreds of thousands of artists in smaller cities and towns across the country who have had to compromise their dream because America has left the funding of the arts largely to the whims of private philanthropists. When I made that move to Scranton more than 20 years ago, there were still two professional theater companies in town. I worked for both when I could, but had to avoid conflict of interest after settling for the stability of working as an arts journalist at the Scranton Times Tribune. I stayed for 15 years, sharing my insights and enthusiasm for the arts with readers throughout Northeast Pennsylvania until the newspaper industry too was no longer stable. I never completely stopped writing plays or making theater. I couldn't. I found a way to produce shoestring readings of my own new plays and those of other regional playwrights and worked on independent projects not likely to create controversy. I was fortunate to receive grants from the Pennsylvania Council on the Arts and the Pennsylvania Humanities Council and helped distribute dollars from our Lackawanna County Arts Tax via the Lackawanna County Council for the Arts and Culture on which I have served for 13 years. You would be shocked at what Scranton artists can make out of a few thousand dollars. Artist residencies throughout Scranton Public Theater Artist residencies through Scranton Public Theater and the United Neighborhood Center, funded by the county's Arts Engage program, helped pay for my growing daughter's extracurricular activities and phone bills. Working as a teaching artist gave me the confidence to apply for work as an adjunct professor at Lackawanna College after I lost my job at the newspaper. By 2016, my girls had graduated high school and I decided at age 45 to go back to school. Instead of choosing a practical degree, I let my heart decide and I earned my MFA in playwriting and screenwriting. Even now, as I'm working three part-time jobs to maybe clear $34,000 this year, I don't regret that choice. In addition to teaching as many classes as I can get as a part-time adjunct professor, limit four classes, I do marketing and communications part-time for the Catherine McCauley Center, a nonprofit that helps homeless women and children. A nonprofit that helps women and children experiencing homelessness. I have also been contracted to work as a teaching artist with the Philadelphia Arts and Education Partnership on a federal research project measuring the impact of arts integration into the elementary school curriculum. 
the semesters are exhausting. And while I love what I do, I pray for one sustainable full-time job with benefits, so I might save something for retirement before it's too late. More time to write plays and theater would be a bonus, although that habit is bound to cost more than it will reward. I've learned it is not enough to be a sufficient writer in 21st century America. Perhaps my scripts are not remarkable enough. Perhaps I am not marketable enough. It doesn't matter. I will keep writing anyway. My conviction in the power of the arts to change lives overwhelms self-pity. I have had the good fortune to work on the front lines of the cultural divide and see the statistics firsthand in the flesh. Some of my community college students have never seen a live stage play or been to a museum. It is a privilege to introduce them to the emotional, psychological, intellectual, and social benefits of making the arts part of their everyday lives. I don't doubt the data that young people educated in the arts are 40% more likely to have friends from different racial groups when they grow up and be 50% more active in their communities. Of course, they are more likely to, to vote, twice as likely to graduate college, and five times less likely to drop out. The National Endowment for the Arts has done a lot for this country, but with a socioeconomic impact valued at more than $877 billion, more than agriculture and mining combined, the arts deserve even greater penetration and appreciation throughout American society. Is there any good reason not to establish a department and secretary of arts and culture our department here in Lackawanna County has made a tremendous impact with marginal funding. Certainly, Lackawanna County is not more progressive than the United States of America. Finally, I urge you to make arts and culture workers a legislative priority. There is no American economic recovery without a robust arts and culture economic recovery. Sincerely, Alicia Grega.